airport. That's where you pay premium. A lot of amateurs who build things generally stop their construction at HF. Your HF is seen to be more difficult and with more specialised components. But this project is possibly one exception. I'm not sure if many of you are going to build this because many have receivers that already cover a wide frequency range on your HF. But just in case you haven't, then this little unit is a way of receiving the amateur 70 centimetre band, or at least certain frequencies of it, on an Australian UHF CB radio. This is a Uniden UH040, a popular UHF CB around 20, maybe 25 years ago. It covers the 40 channels as you had then, and it's 25 kilohertz steps uses AA batteries and about half a watt output but in this case we're not using it for transmit just for receive. Anyway with this CB on your HF I will now attempt to receive amateur transmissions on the 70 centimeter band which here in Australia the most activity is between 432 and 440 megahertz. So we need a converter that shifts the frequency, the incoming signal, up about 30 or 40 megahertz from 430 to 440 up to around 476, 477. To do that, you need two stages which form a converter circuit together. The first stage is a local oscillator. It's crystal controlled. I just happen to have a crystal for 37.025 megahertz. This is a overtone oscillator circuit, third overtone circuit, so it's got a tuned circuit here which you tune to resonate on 37.025 megahertz. You have to be quite careful when you're building these types of crystal oscillators because if you don't build it right then you may end up with signals on other frequencies most likely the fundamental which is about a third of this. Anyway this provides a local oscillator signal that allows the other stage of this unit to step the frequency up or down and that is this mixer stage. Very very simple, uh, all passive components. I'm using a germanium diode just the same you use in a crystal set. I've got one tuned circuit here uh, which is where you've got the incoming signal coming through on 439 megahertz and then you've got the outcoming signal at 477 megahertz and that is mixed with our signal from the local oscillator not a direct electrical connection just a wire I'll just show you the parts and you'll see how it works in a bit more detail. Right here is the crystal oscillator. You can just see the crystal there, 37 megahertz. Using an old style of transistor, a 2N2368, although a 2N2222 should be okay, or even a 2N3904. Uh, we're only talking about 37 megahertz here. Uh, this is a variable capacitor, a trimmer, goes up to 25 picofarad. This here, and they do look quite a bit different from one another, but this is an inductor of one microhenry. And that resonates to uh, 37 megahertz. The yellow wire you see just goes from the collector, the junction of the collector and the uh, one microhenry inductor and that wire just finishes here. It's not actually physically connected. It just couples a bit of RF, the 37 megahertz, into the mixer stage. And you can see the germanium diode there. And of note is there aren't actually coils as such. There are just straight bits of wire. This is uh, tinned copper wire. Might even be a bit better than that. But it's about five or about six centimeters long and that length is deliberate 
Um, you've also got about two centimeters here, which is where I have the incoming signal from the antenna, and there's a 30 picofarad capacitor. I haven't optimized these values. You might get slightly better results if you change the tapping point. But overall, the antenna is low impedance, so it's tapped to near the bottom of this wire, which forms the front end. And that goes straight to this crystal diode. Now these are quite unusual looking trimmers you might not have come across, but they are very low value. They go from two up to about, I think it's 12 picofarads. Um, or might, might be even lower, might be 10 picofarad. But that's important since we're dealing with UHF. A higher value, a larger type of trimmer won't be suitable. And this came from some old VHF gear. And it's multi-turned, so it's easy to adjust to uh, resonate on the right frequency. Anyway, this is the front end. That translates to this coil here. And this resonates on our incoming signal, which is around 439 megahertz. Now, in Australia, we've got a local repeater here, um, 439.9, which is about 10 kilometers from here so that's quite an active repeater and that's what I'll be using for the testing I've mentioned the yellow wire before it's not actually electrically connected you might have to just adjust the position of this wire to get the coupling right if it's too far away then you won't get um, much of a, a conversion uh, at all on the other side of the diode is another trimmer capacitor identical to the first one and another bit of wire that is the output inductor now um, ideally you want to have these at right angles so I didn't have quite enough room so I've just bent it around a bit it's about five or six centimeters now you could if you were going to have this going into a receiver that had an antenna socket with a removable antenna. You could have one of these sockets, a second BNC. You'd probably connect it about there and tap it off down here. But because the antenna here is not detachable, I just put it through here and that provides enough coupling into the receiver. I should mention the mixer is entirely passive. There's no RF amplification, so as far as an antenna goes, don't just use a piece of wire a quarter wavelength long. It might work, but I suggest an outdoor antenna at home. Not the highest of sensitivity, but as you'll hear, it does work. If you've got a FM repeater output, for instance, the one here is about 10 kilometers or so away. Uh, it might have a range maybe 15, 20 kilometers. You certainly wouldn't use this for long distance reception. Um, now to do tests with this, it is quite fiddly. I suggest using another transceiver, um, one that's set up for the right frequency somewhere near the repeater output. That's UHF, um, you know, 439 megahertz, so a 70 centimeter handheld. Then when you've got this receiver set up, which is 477 megahertz, you apply power from the nine volt battery and you try and find a signal on here. Now, one thing I should mention is that this crystal 37025 megahertz, you might get a little bit of frequency pulling if you adjust this um, trimmer. This receiver has only 25 kilohertz steps, so there might be an issue if you are off frequency then if your repeater is uh, a few kilohertz away, then the reception will be distorted. So a lot of this depends on how lucky you are with the crystal. If you are able to move its frequency a little bit, that would be a help, but you can't do that very much with overtone oscillators. But yeah, so it's not the greatest of performance, but it's a bit of a fun project that can help you teach the basics of mixing circuits as is common in RF design. Where did I get the circuit from? It came from this 50-year-old book on solid-state projects for the experimenter 
by Wayne Green of 73 Magazine fame and the genesis of it was this single transistor converter. Now this was designed for much lower frequencies. The idea was the output was an AM car radio and it could receive they say about 100 to 200 megahertz that depended on what crystal you were using but the same principle one transistor crystal oscillator and a simple passive diode mixer stage and of course you had to select the frequency of the crystal carefully uh, because you'd only be able to tune a small slice of this segment but still it could receive stations like two meters um, you could slope detect FM signals on um, just by tuning off to one side on the AM radio it would hear AM signals directly it would also receive various public service utility weather other stations up in the VHF high band region uh, there's another version that you just needed to change some of the values have slightly bigger capacitors and coils a different crystal frequency and then you'd be able to cover lower frequencies 28 to 54 megahertz but the luck really depended like on this project on what crystal you had and whether it was near enough to convert the signals to the amount you require If you're in a different country, then your requirements will be different. For a start, you won't have the 477 megahertz UHF CB. Uh, in America, you might have family radio, which I think family radio service, which I think is around 462 megahertz thereabouts. Anyway, if you want to have a similar converter that again steps up signals from 440 megahertz up to 460 odd, then you'll need another crystal in here. And crystals are probably the most expensive part of a project, unless you can get them cheaply from ham fests. If your crystal is below about 25 megahertz or thereabouts, then your oscillator circuit will be slightly different. It will be a fundamental mode oscillator circuit, not a third overtone type, which I'm using here. Oh, very good. Yes, the poor staff here at 
there's a girl here at the, there's only girls here at, at the Macca's store here, they're absolutely run off their feet. Do you want to get the most from your portable QRP operating? Good Antennas is a great place to start. Find out how I succeed with my two books, Hand Carried QRP Antennas and More Hand Carried QRP Antennas. The big sellers with favourable reviews from all around the world. To learn more, visit vk3ye.com or search the titles on Amazon.